Yeah, so, um, well, thanks, Rudadeep, and uh, thanks for the invitation and for organizing these seminars, and thanks, everyone, for coming today. So let's begin at the beginning. So as we know in mathematics, we are confronted with wild classification problems. So for example, we know that there is essentially no hope to classify all the finite dimensional representations of most finite groups in positive characteristic. This is a wild problem that we'll probably never be able to completely solve. As another example, there's essentially no hope for us to classify all finite CW complexes up to homotopy equivalents. It's another natural question that is basically just too hard for mathematics and for the human species. And of course, there are many other examples of sort of uh, classification problems we would like to solve in mathematics that are just um, too difficult. So with this in mind, a very significant development of the last 30 or 40 years has been the realization that nevertheless, we can often classify these mathematical objects up to, well, not up to isomorphism, but up to a weaker notion of equivalence. So we work stably, that is, we work in a suitable stable homotopy category of such objects. And we classify those objects not up to isomorphism, but rather up to a weaker notion of equivalence, which describes how these objects can build each other using the tensor triangulated structure of the stable category. So more precisely, we say the two objects are equivalent if they can be built from each other using the operations of the tensor triangulated structure of the, sorry, of the, using the tensor triangulated structure. So direct sums, tensoring with objects, using exact triangles and so on. And so technically, as some of us may be aware, such a classification technically really amounts to classifying the tr thick triangulated tensor ideal subcategories of this stable category. Why? Well, two, guard, two objects are equivalent in this kind of weak sense precisely when they generate the same thick tensor ideal subcategory of K. And so if we have a classification of the thick tensor ideals of our category, that will give us a classification of the objects up to this weaker notion of equivalence. Now, historically, there were three primary examples of such classification theorems that mathemati mathematicians discovered. So, for example, if we take the stable module category of a finite group, um, John Carlson, who's in the audience, and um, Dave Benson and Jeremy Ricard proved, uh, established a classification of the thick tensor ideals of this category in the 90s. Another example would be the stable homotopy category of finite spectra in algebraic topology. The thick subcategories of this category were classified through the work of Devonats and then Hopkins and Smith. And the third example was the derived category of perfect complexes on a scheme. Um, the thick tensor ideals of this category were um, classified by Thomason. So these are sort of three historical examples that showed that it's actually possible to classify the thick tensor ideals of some very interesting um, tensor triangulated categories. But each of these results was you know, a major theorem in these different subjects. Now, how did one go about proving these theorems? Well, they all were affected by suitable notions of support for the objects that were being studied. So for example, the classification theorem for the stable module category uses the theory of so-called support varieties, which assigns to each finite dimensional representation a certain closed subscheme of the projective scheme associated to the group cohomology ring. And then using these support varieties, one could start to reason geometrically um, about representations in terms of these sub-varieties of the group cohomology. As another example, 
um, the classification theorem for the, the um, stable homotopy category of finite spectra um, is given in terms of a notion of support for finite spectra, which is defined using the so-called Morava K theories. So these were sort of distinct theorems in these three different subjects, but they were kind of greatly clarified by the work of Paul Ballmer, who introduced the universal notion of support for essentially small tensor triangulated categories. So what Balmer did is he introduced, he associated to any essentially small tensor triangulated category, a certain topological space, spec K, the spectrum of the category. So the way it's defined is analogous to the prime ideal spectrum of a commutative ring. So the points of this space are the sort of prime thick tensor ideals of the category. And you can associate to each object of your category a certain closed subset, sub X, its support. It's just defined as follows. And these closed subsets actually form a basis for the, a basis of closed sets for the topology. So I haven't defined the topology, but once I've defined this, basically an arbitrary closed set is just an arbitrary intersection of these sets. But in any case, it's a, it's a topological space and we have associated to every object a certain closed subset of this topological space. And the conceptual way of thinking about this Balmer spectrum is that it satisfies a universal property. Spec K equipped with this um, notion of support is the universal space with a well-behaved notion of support for the objects of K. So meaning that, well, if you have any other space and you have some assignment of um, closed subsets of the objects of K in that space, and if this assignment of closed subsets to your objects satisfies a number of very basic um, axioms, then there's a unique continuous map from your space to the Balmer spectrum, such that your support is just obtained by pulling back this universal support in the Balmer spectrum. So it's kind of, the Balmer spectrum is basically the kind of, the space equipped with the universal notion of support for these objects. And so what this universal notion of support gives you is that it always classifies the thick tensor ideals of your category. So this is the kind of abstract thick subcategory classification theorem, which says that there's a bijection between the thick tensor ideals of your category and certain subsets of the Balmer spectrum given by sending a thick tensor ideal by to the kind of union of the supports of the objects in that subcategory. So if you haven't come across this term before, I can just tell you. So a Thomson subset, it's just a, it's a, it's a union of closed subsets, each of which has a quasi-compact complement. Slightly technical if you've never seen it before, but for example, if um, your space is Noetherian, then, uh, well, this last part about being having a quasi-compact complement is sort of automatic, and a Thomson subset is just a union of closed sets. In other words, a specialization closed subset. So, right, we have this kind of abstract classification theorem, which is telling us that the universal support always classifies the thick tensor ideals of our category. So one way of thinking or appreciating this theorem is that it's basically telling us that um, the problem of classifying the thick tensor ideals of our category is essentially equivalent to describing this Balmer spectrum, describing this space. We sort of always get a classification of the thick tensor ideals in terms of this abstractly defined space. And so really what we just need to do is describe in more concrete terms, you know, compute what this space actually looks like. Feel free to interrupt if there are any um, questions. And so maybe just to um, hammer it home with what I was saying a couple of slides ago. So under this 
um, classification theorem, two objects X and Y generate the same thick tensor ideal precisely when their universal supports are the same. So two objects are equivalent in this weak sense that I mentioned before, precisely when they have the same support. Okay, so as I've mentioned, you know, sort of classifying th the thick tensor ideals is sort of equivalent to describing this space. And so you can sort of go both ways in this story. You can describe the space spec K and then obtain a classification of thick tensor ideals from that. Or you can start with a classification of thick tensor ideals and from that kind of extract um, what the space looks like. So historically, it's the classification theorems that came first. So for example, um, if we take the derived category of, of perfect complexes of the commutative ring R, um, Neiman and Thomason um, classify the thick tensor ideals of this category. And using that, you can describe the spectrum and you find it's exactly um, reduces or is equivalent to the ordinary spectrum of the commutative ring. So this construction generalizes the, the ordinary spectrum from um, algebraic geometry. Indeed, more generally, if you take the derived category of perfect complexes on a scheme X, uh, we have that the Balmer spectrum of that category recovers the scheme X. This is from the work of Thomason. On the other hand, if we take the stable module category of a finite group through the work of um, Benson, um, Carlson, and uh, Ricard, we can describe the Balmer spectrum of this category as being the projective scheme associated to the group cohomology ring. So, and you know, there are other examples one could discuss. So this is the, the basic story of, of where we're at with sort of classifying the thick tensor ideals and how it basically amounts to understanding this invariant, this Balmer spectrum of the category. So this is sort of um, the part of the story and the theory that's sort of well understood. And you know, describing the Balmer spectrum of the category is not an easy task, but theoretically the story is sort of understood. So it's all nice, except everything I've been saying is only dealing with basically classifying compact objects. So for example, we're talking about the stable module category of finite dimensional representations. We're talking about the stable homotopy category of finite spectra. We're talking about perfect complexes. All of these are kind of, you know, often these categories that we're talking about arise as the subcategory of compact objects in a much larger, rigidly compactly generated tensor triangulated category T. So for example, the stable module category of finite dimensional representations sits inside the large stable module category of arbitrary representations, not necessarily finite dimensional representations. Similarly, the stable homotopy category of finite spectra sits inside the large, you know, the, the full stable homotopy category of all spectra. And similarly, the derived category of perfect complexes sits inside the just the plain unbounded derived category of all arbitrary unbounded complexes of R modules. And so all of this story I've just been talking about has been sort of classifying the objects of these small, these subcategories sitting inside these bigger categories. And it turns out that many of the most interesting objects are not compact. They don't sit inside these subcategories. So for example, the objects that represent cohomology theories in algebraic topology are typically going to be um, infinite dimensional non-compact objects. They're gonna be objects of SH, but not objects of SH finite. And so if we want to understand those objects, we're going to have to deal with these non-compact objects. So, that's the next thing. 
how does one deal with big objects, these non-compact objects? We have the same basic goal. You know, we want to understand these, um, you know, big objects of these big tensor triangulated categories. We want to kind of classify them up to some kind of um, weak notion of equivalence. And technically, we could express that now as the goal being to classify the localizing tensor ideals of these big tensor triangulated categories. Right. So, for example, if we could understand the localizing tensor ideals of the big stable homotopy category, that would provi provide a kind of coarse classification of cohomology theories in algebraic topology. It'd be a very interesting thing to have. Now, we can't apply Balmer's construction of the spectrum to these big tensor triangulated categories T. Now, the first point, which is maybe not the most important point, is well, these categories are not essentially small. You know, we kind of needed to needed our category to be essentially small for there to be a set of prime ideals. So the spectrum was a set. But maybe that's not really the main point. I think the real point is that um, the axioms for Balmer's universal notion of support is not are not really appropriate for these big infinite dimensional non-compact objects. So for example, intuitively, we think that the support of a compact object should be a closed subset, it should be closed. And this is one of the axioms of, of Balmer's notion of support, is that it's assigning a closed subset to each object. But we don't really expect that the support of an arbitrary infinite dimensional kind of thing would be closed. You know, we could we'd imagine a without any kind of finiteness conditions on your objects, you wouldn't ex ex expect the support uh, of such things to be closed. And so these sort of axioms that um, Balmer has, you know, Balmer's, the Balmer spectrum is the universal space with the notion of support satisfying some axioms, but those axioms are not necessarily um, going to be um, expected for big objects. Right? So we can still attempt to classify the localizing tensor ideals of these big categories using some notion of support for the objects of these categories. But, well, support for big objects is less well behaved, as I've already been alluding to. And it's less clear cut what properties such a notion of support should have. You know, ideally, we would like some kind of big version of the Balmer spectrum, some kind of a universal notion of support for big tensor triangulated categories, which suitably classifies the localizing tensor ideals. That would be great. But, well, to this day, no one has achieved such a construction. And there's evidence that, in general, it, it can't exist. So for that, you can, I have some references. Um, but for those of you who are maybe a little more familiar with some of this stuff, um, right? I mean, I think the idea is that, you know, the in general, the collection of localizing tensor ideals, if you think of that as a lattice, this lattice is not necessarily a, what's the word, a spatial frame, meaning that it's, um, you can look at, you can look at these references if you're interested. Nevertheless, even though you know, we don't have a sort of big version of the Balmer spectrum, um, you know, there's still work to be done in um, obtaining useful theories of support for big objects that could, some, that could be helpful in classifying the localizing tensor ideals of these categories. Okay, and in fact, a lot of quite positive results have been attained at least under some kind of Noetherian hypotheses. So the original example is due to Neiman. So he took R to be a commutative Noetherian ring and proved, established a classification. Well, the usual cohomological support gives you a um, bijection 
between the localizing tensor ideals of the big derived category of R, they correspond with arbitrary subsets of the spectrum of R. So in contrast, um, the thick tensor ideals of perfect complexes correspond to the specialization closed subsets of spec R. If we pass to arbitrary localizing tensor ideals of the unbounded derived category, they correspond to arbitrary subsets of spec R. And this is sort of um, illustrating the, the point I was just saying that um, in some sense, the support of an arbitrary non-finite dimensional thing can be essentially arbitrary, arbitrary subset of spec R. Okay, so this is a, a the kind of starting point for successful classifications of localizing tensor ideals of big categories. Um, and it's, it holds for any community of Noetherian ring, but this theorem fails strongly in general if R is not Noetherian. So you can have examples, there are examples of non Noetherian commutative rings where the right hand side, well, where spec R is just a single point, there's only two subsets of the one point space, and yet where the derived category of R has many localizing tensor ideals. So we can't expect something like this in general. So the other big development in um, this area of mathematics of trying to understand these big um, tensor triangulated categories is the work of uh, Benson, Iangar, and Krause. So they develop a support theory for a compactly generated triangulated category which is equipped with an action by a Noetherian graded commutative ring R. And they, their theory assigns to each object of this category a certain subset of the spectrum of this ring that's, that's acting on the category. So for example, um, if T is a tensor triangulated category, then we can always take the canonical action of the endomorphisms of the unit. This is a graded commutative ring and it acts on the, the tensor triangulated category. And so we could sort of apply this um, theory to this kind of canonical action uh, provided this, this endomorphism ring is, is no theorem so that the theory works. Now, in general, this theory of support does not always classify the localizing tensor ideals of, of T. Um, that's sort of too much to ask. Um, but what Benson, Yingar, and Krause do is they develop a powerful condition called stratification, which is sufficient to obtain such a classification. And as an application, they um, classified the localizing tensor ideals of the big stable module category of all representations. And you know, there have been many further applications of their theory um, since then, but that was sort of the original um, main um, application that they were focused on. On the other hand, a kind of slightly different approach to talking about support for big objects comes through the work of Balmer and Favi. So they introduced a support theory for a rigidly compactly generated tensor triangulated category T. And so now we're so we're talking about tensor triangulated categories. And this assigns to each object of T a certain subset of the Balmer spectrum of compact objects. So I said, you know, there's no Balmer spectrum of the big category T. This Balmer Favi notion of support, it's a notion of support for the big objects, which lies in the Balmer spectrum of the subcategory of compact objects. Now it does require, again, some Noetherian hypotheses on spec of this, on, on the space for it to be kind of well-behaved and, and well-defined. Um, but under those kind of uh, Noetherian hypotheses, this is a notion of support for the objects of T, which extends the universal notion of support for the compact objects. And it was developed 
further and applied the problem of classifying localizing tensor ideals by Greg Stevenson. And in fact, he, he works in an even more general setting where you sort of have a tensor triangulated category acting on a triangulated category, a kind of relative situation. So maybe just very briefly, maybe I'll say something about how this um, Balmer Favi support is constructed intuitively. So intuitively, we think of our category T as some kind of geometric thing over the Balmer spectrum of compact objects. Think of it as a bundle or sheaf. I mean, don't take any of these words too seriously, but we think of it as some kind of geometric object lying over the Balmer spectrum. And we're going to assume that the spectrum is weakly Noetherian. This is the kind of Noetherian hypothesis we need. And what this gives us is that it gives us that every point in our space is weakly visible, which can be characterized in a couple of different ways. But in particular, it tells us that the singleton element of the prime P, the singleton set consisting of the prime P, can be written as the intersection of a Thomason subset and the complement of a Thomason subset. Now that might sound like a little bit of a strange condition, but intuitively what it, what it allows us to do is it means that we can isolate the point P by the combination of a finite co-localization, which morally is sort of restricting us to Y1, combined with a finite localized localization, which basically amounts to restricting to Y2 complement. And so sort of by combining a finite co-localization with a finite localization, we're sort of restricting attention to the prime P. And so indeed we can define this object GP. This is morally, this is the, um, you're, you're taking the finite localization of the unit and then co-localizing the unit. You get this object GP, and you can think of um, kind of what you get by tensoring with this object as sort of like the stock of the category at P. It's maybe not the, the best word, but it's sort of like what you get by kind of focusing attention down at that at that prime. And so, for each object in your category, you define its support as those primes such that GP tensor of T is non-zero. And so this is a subset of the Balmer spectrum of the compact objects. So this is the, the, the balmer favi notion of support. Okay, so just cleaning that up. So and reminding ourselves what we're doing. So if we assume that the Balmer spectrum is a weak Noetherian space, we have this notion of support sub T lying in the Balmer spectrum defined for each object in our category, and in particular, for a compact object, this notion of support recovers the, the universal um, notion of support for compact objects. So in this project, um, joint with um, Tobias Bartel and Drew Hurd, we systematically develop a theory of stratification based on the Balmer spectrum and this balmer favi notion of support. And we sort of clarify the relationship of this theory, which is using this balmer favi notion of support lying in the Balmer spectrum with the um, approach of Benson, Ingar, and Krause. And then we apply this um, kind of new approach to stratification to um, some new examples, uh, notably in homotopy theory. So let's um, say a bit more about that. So follow, following Benson, Igor, and Krause, we say that our, our tensor trilid category T is stratified if the following two conditions hold. So the first is the so-called local to global principle, which says that, well, kind of intuitively, that any object T can be reconstructed from its germs, reconstructed from the objects GP tensor T. Or more precisely, um, every object T is contained in the localizing tensor ideal generated by these objects. Okay, this is the local to global principle. And then the second condition, 
says that for each prime p, the localizing tensor ideal generated by this object GP is minimal. So sort of morally, this is a localizing tensor ideal whose support consists of just the prime p, a single prime, a single point. And so this is saying that that localizing tensor ideal whose support is a single point is actually minimal. It doesn't have any non-zero, uh, non-trivial localizing tensor ideal subcategories. Okay, so this is this, these are the two conditions that uh, Benton, Igar, and Krause um, introduce. And so the first uh, theorem uh, we can say then is that if T is a rigidly compactly generated category whose Balmer spectrum is weak Noetherian, then, well, the following are equivalent. One, those two conditions hold, local to global principle holds for T, and we have minimality at each point. And two, the map, this notion of support, the balmer favi notion of support going from the localizing tensor ideals of your category to arbitrary subsets of the Balmer spectrum, this is a bijection. Okay, so in other words, stratification is equivalent to the classification of thick tensor ideals. Okay, the localizing tensor ideals are classified by this uh, notion of support precisely when those two conditions hold. Now, okay, so with that in mind, if we want to stratify a category, we need we have two we have two things we need to deal with. We have the local to global principle, and we have this minimality business. Now it's known through the work of Greg Stevenson that the local to global principle doesn't always hold. There are examples where um, we don't have it. Nevertheless, in this uh, paper, we use and improve some of Stevenson's results um, to obtain a stronger positive theorem, which is that if the Balmer spectrum is Noetherian, a Noetherian space, then the local to global principle holds. So this theorem is actually very nice because it, um, it really is giving us the local to global principle for free in a lot of examples. And this allows, this is kind of quite useful and allows us to, um, you know, clean up some things and just, you know, we it kind of cleans up the statements of some things because we sort of automatically kind of get the local to global principle in a lot of situations. Another thing that we do in this paper is we um, pin down some of the consequences of strat stratification. So, you know, if we have this classification of localizing tensor ideals, there are a bunch of consequences. So, for example, if that happens, then the balmer favi notion of support um, satisfies the so-called tensor product formula. We also obtain a complete description of the Balsfield lattice for T, and in particular, um, it turns out that there's then no difference between localizing tensor ideals and Balsfield classes. And we also show that if T is stratified, then the telescope conjecture holds for T, provided uh, we have a certain topological condition on the, on the space, um, namely that it's so-called generically Noetherian, or whatever that means. I can tell you if you're interested. But it's a it's a topological condition between weakly Noetherian and Noetherian. So I'm sort of running out of time, but um, let me let me try to kind of propagandize and sort of um, kind of explain some of the features of this kind of theory of stratification that we developed in this paper. So I want to discuss these features under three headings: universality, permanence, and generality. So the first thing, universality. So one of the things that we prove is sort of in a slogan that the balmer favi notion of support provides the universal approach to stratification in weakly Noetherian contexts. So what I mean by that more precisely is suppose you have some notion of support for your category lying in some weakly Noetherian space. If this notion of support stratifies T in a way compatible with the usable class classification of thick tensor ideals 
of the compact part. So if this notion of support classifies the localizing tensor ideals of T in a way compatible with the usual classification of thick tensor ideals, then this unique identification of this notion, this space and this notion of support with the Bomber spectrum and the bomber fabi notion of support. Okay. So if, if you can classify the objects of your category, the bomber fabi notion of support will be the thing that's doing it. So as a corollary, we get that, for example, if T is a, a rigidly compactly generated tensor triangulated category, which is stratified in the sense of Benson, Iyengar, and Krause by the action of a gradient Noetherian ring R, then the BIK space of supports is canonically homeomorphic to the Balmer spectrum. And the BIK notion of support coincides with the balmer fabi notion of support. Okay, so this is sort of a kind of um, uniqueness type um, result for, for this approach to stratification. The second thing is permanence. So we're basing this approach to stratification on the Balmer spectrum, which kind of leads to a kind of geometric perspective of, of thinking about things. And indeed, one can start kind of um, thinking geometrically about this problem of stratification. So for example, stratification satisfies versions of Zabriskie and Etal descent. So let me just state um, such a theorem. So suppose T satisfies the local to global principle, which by our previous theorem is always the case if the spectrum is no theorem. Suppose we cover the spectrum by complements of Thomas and subsets. Then T is stratified if and only if sort of the categories over the I are stratified. So for example, we could apply this theorem to a cover of the spectrum by quasi-compact open subsets. This is, was already done by Greg Stevenson. This, this result was already obtained by Greg Stevenson in that case. And that's sort of showing us that to establish stratification, we can reduce it to um, a risky open cover. But this theorem, this, the, the way I've stated this theorem is actually a bit more general than, than that. We're allowing these VIs to be complements of Thomas and subsets. And well, what you can do is um, given any point in your spectrum, you can look at all of the generalizations of that point. That is the complement of a Thomason. All the points for whom your point is in their closure, that's the complement of a Thomason. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is that you can take here the union over all primes P of sort of all the generalizations. Uh, maybe that's a confusing way of saying it. The point is, is that this theorem gives us as a special case, uh, reduces the problem of stratification to the local categories at each point. Okay, so not only can you deal with sort of as a risky open cover, you can really reduce yourselves to the stalks the local categories. And this is a very useful thing to do. Okay, there's also a kind of weak form of finite etal descent, which is important for applications, but maybe I'll gloss over it. Um, okay, let's skip that. And then the third point I wanted to make is about generality. So this kind of approach to stratification provides a uniform perspective on old and new classification theorems. So the following categories are stratified. This is sort of collecting um, sort of results from the literature. The big stable module category of a finite group, right? So this was due to Benson, Igar, and Krause. The derived category of quasi coherent sheaves on the Noetherian scheme due to Greg Stevenson. Um, the classification of thick tensor deals is actually originally due to Alonso Tario, Giamias, Lopez, and Suto Solorio. The category of EN local spectra. Right, so 
the, the classification of thick subcategories in this example is actually originally due to Harvey and Strickland in their book on Morava K theory and localization. Another example is the category of rational G spectra for any compact Lie group. So the, the classification of thick tensor ideals in this case is due to John Greenlee's. So let's just um, simplify this slide a bit. Okay, so these are our four examples. Now, this theorem is saying that these categories are stratified. And what we mean by stratified is stratified by the balmer favi notion of support. So there is actually new mathematical content in this statement, right? So um, for example, it's telling us that, you know, the notion of support that John Greenlees uses to, um, in this example of rational G spectra, which is given in terms of um, geometric isotropy, this theorem tells us that that is um, giving you the same thing as the balmer favi notion of support in this example. Or similarly, if we take the um, example of the of EN local spectra, it's telling us that the notion of support used by Harvey and Strickland in using the Morava K theories, that notion of support coincides with the balmer favi notion of support in this example. Okay, so there is some new mathematical content in the, the statement of this theorem, even though these are kind of old examples. And the other thing really worth emphasizing about these four examples is that they're not canonically stratified in the sense of, of Benson, Ingar, and Krause. You know, so there's no, um, like, okay, in the case of the stable module category, there's a kind of little technicality in, um, you know, the endomorphism ring of the unit in this, in this, exa in this example um, is the group Tate cohomology. But the Tate cohomology ring in general is not Noetherian. And so BIK are not actually able to take the Tate cohomology ring and run their theory because it's not Noetherian. So instead they take the ordinary group cohomology ring, which also acts on the category, and then you know, use that action to, to then classify the thick tensor ideas. But it's a little bit of a little, it's a little unfortunate, you know, because you know, you'd like to just directly take the endomorphisms of the unit and the, the canonical action of that ring on the category, um, but you have this issue with the Noetherian condition. But the Balmer spectrum in this case is kind of weakly Noetherian and this kind of approach using the Balmer Favio support kind of works. For these other examples, the, the issue is a little bit more extreme because um, in these examples, there's no ring that's acting on the category that would appropriately kind of classify um, the localizing tensor ideals of these examples. There's no ring action suitable in these examples, um, but using this notion of support in the Balmer spectrum, we're able to um, classify the localizing tensor ideals. Okay, so um, these are sort of old examples. We also apply this um, theory to uh, new examples, notably in equivariant stable homotopy theory. So let's let SHG, I'll, I'll just try to be very brief. So let's let SHG be the equivariant stable homotopy category. So, you know, if we want to run this game, right, we kind of want to understand something about the Balmer spectrum of this category. And turns out that we understand what the Balmer spectrum is as a set. And although there are sort of some interesting questions that remain about pinning down exactly the topology of this space. It's an interesting story for another day, uh, but this is the, uh, through the work of a number of authors. It's an interesting story, but anyway, we know it as a set. Now, this is an example of a category that is highly non-Noetherian. So even if we take the, the non-equivariant case, even if we take the, the, the trivial group G, um, you know, a classification of localizing tensor ideals for this category is kind of a completely wide open problem. So with that in mind, um, the idea one might have is to study certain linearizations and truncations of this category. So I'm not going to be precise what I mean by this, but for example, a linearization of the G equivariant stable homotopy category would be something like the category of derived Mackie functors 
I claim that that's a kind of linearization of this category. On the other hand, a truncation of the geocovariant stable homotopy category would be something like the category of EN local spectral Mackie functors. So SHG is highly non-Noetherian, but these, this linearization and this truncation, these are much more Noetherian. And we can have some success potentially in studying these categories. So I'm running a little out of time. So let's kind of um, skip over this discussion of spectral Mackie functors. Um, let's just let's just say that you know for any commutative ring spectrum E, you can talk about um, spectral Mackie functors valued in E. Okay, and you can talk about the tensor triangulated category of spectral E valued Mackie functors. So for example, if you took E to be the sphere spectrum, you would obtain just the geocovariant stable homotopy category. So in other words, you can think of um, the geocovariant stable homotopy category as just spectral G Mackie functors valued in spectra. On the other hand, if you take E to be the eilenberg maclean spectrum of the integers, sort of spectral G Mackie functors valued in HZ, these are sort of derived Mackie functors. Um, they're kind of in the sense of collated. On the other hand, if you take E to be um, the EN localization of the sphere spectrum, then spectral G Mackie functors valued in um, this spectrum, uh, these are exactly EN local spectral G Mackie functors. So basically what I'm trying to get at is that um, these categories that I'm talking about, you can all you can think of them all in terms of uh, categories of, of spectral Mackie functors valued in different commutative ring spectra, okay? And so these are the kinds of categories we are applying our theory to. And so again, We'd like to understand something about the Balmer spectrum of, of these categories. And it turns out that, um, well, indeed, we understand the spectrum of these categories of spectral Mackey functors as a set in terms of the Balmer spectrum of the derived category of the commutative ring spectrum of, of, of um, coefficients that we're using. Okay. But there are, just like in the, for the case of the geocovariant stable homotopy category, there are still kind of interesting questions about the topology. Now, in the case where we take E to be HZ, um, the spectrum of this category was kind of completely computed in, in previous work of myself with Irakli Pachakori and Christian Wimmer. So in that, in that example, um, we we're able to completely describe the, the spectrum of the category. And it's actually a very uh, beautiful uh, picture. The spectrum of the category of derived Mackey functors is, is exactly capturing the kind of height zero and the height infinity parts of the geocovariant stable homotopy category. On the other hand, if we take the, the category of EN local spectral Mackey functors, um, we don't have a complete understanding of the Balmer spectrum. We know that it bijects onto this, this truncation, the height less than or equal to n layers of the geocovariant category. But we can't actually prove that this bijection is a homeomorphism. So um, there's a little bit of a unresolved open question there about the Balmer spectrum of E and local spectral multifunctors. But in any case, we, we understand this as a set. And it turns out that that is sufficient for our purposes of stratification. So the theorem that we prove is, well, let G be a finite group and let E be a commutative ring spectrum such that the spec of the derived category of this ring spectrum is Noetherian. If the derived category of coefficients is stratified, then so is the category of spectral G Mackey functors with coefficients in E. So, for example, we could take E to be HZ, 
derived category of the integers is stratified. This is the original work of Neiman, right, of a commuted Noetherian ring. Um, and so this tells us that um, Mackey functors valued in HZ are stratified. So we obtain a classification of the localizing tensor ideal, so the category of derived G Mackey functors for a finite group G. And as another example, um, if we take the coefficients to be ln s, so in this case, uh, the derived category, that's um, the en local category, which was the result originally studied by Hobby and Strickland um, from, that, I, that I mentioned in that, this list of prior examples. So that's sort of like the non-equivariant base case. And so as a corollary, we get a classification of the localizing tensor ideals for the category of en local spectral G Mackey functors, this kind of truncation of the G equivariant stable homotopy category. Um, yeah, so those are sort of the, the primary kind of new examples we were looking at. And let me just sort of summarize uh, what I've been saying. So this approach for understanding big tensor triangulated categories involves two steps. First of all, it's a property of the category whether or not it is stratified, right? It's sort of, in, it's something, it's not, there's no choice involved. There's no like, you don't have to choose a ring and you don't have to, you know, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a kind of property of the category because you have this sort of universal choice of the bomber fabi notion of support. And when it's stratified, we get this classification of localizing tensor ideals, which is given in terms of the set underlying the bomber spectrum of the compact part, right? It's just involving the set. And then the next thing you can do is to try to understand the topology of the Balmer spectrum. And if you can understand the topology, you would then get a classification of the thick tensor ideals of the compact object, of the compact object. So this is sort of flipping things from the way maybe we usually think about it, where we usually think of classifying the thick tensor ideals of, of compact stuff as sort of the easier task, and then classifying the localizing tensor ideals is the harder task. In some sense, maybe this is the thing that comes first. You know, this is the thing you don't even need to understand the topology of the Balmer spectrum to do this, but then understanding the Balmer spectrum, the topology of the Balmer spectrum will then give you this. Okay, and so in summary, this notion of stratification based on the Balmer spectrum, it's quite flexible. It can be effective. Um, even when we only have partial knowledge of the Balmer spectrum, right? When you can have, we have these unresolved questions in the topology. And this aspect of it, of our, of our story, also distinguishes this approach um, from that of Benson, Ingar, and Krause, because the approach of Benson, Ingar, and Krause is simultaneously classifying the localizing tensor ideals and computing the Balmer spectrum in terms of spec of the ring that's acting. So in this sense, um, BIK stratification is both stronger and weaker than our notion of stratification. It's sort of, it's, it's doing both more and less. Um, yeah, and so I think I'll, I'll stop there. Um, yeah, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Baron. Let us all mute ourselves and uh, give Baron a round of applause. Okay, uh, if you have any questions for the speaker, please unmute yourself and ask them. Or if you want, you can put them in the chat. There was a, there were a few comments in the chat. Uh, Karen, can you have a look? Yeah, I had, I had one comment in the chat, um, which was, you mentioned that you probably can't you probably can't do a big, a big TT classification in general because some lattice isn't spatial. And then you mentioned later this Bowes field lattice, but that's probably not the same lattice you were talking about. Um, so, I mean, yes, I mean, so you, could, you could consider the lattice of, of localizing tensor ideals, right? If we're in the yeah. category T. Um, uh, the Bowes field lattice is closely related to that, um, but it's not exactly the same thing. But I think maybe more the point is that um, in general, um, in general, the localizing tensor ideals of an arbitrary T is not going to be a spatial frame. Um, I guess mm -hmm. it's, 
I guess it's possible that in, I mean, it is in some examples, right? So like, um, wait, okay, I, I don't want to say something wrong, but I think it's quite plausible that for some categories it could be, um, but in general, you can't expect it to be. Um, and so for example, if you have an, uh, but, but in terms of the, the connection with the Bowsford lattice, I mean, one of the things we proved is that, um, you know, if you're, if you have a strata, if your category is stratified, then um, every localizing tensor ideal is a Bowsford class. So you actually, the, the lattice of localizing tensor ideals actually in that case coincides with the, the Bowsford lattice. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Um, but in general, there could be, it could, they could be, they could differ. You could have localizing tensor ideals that are not um, Bowsford classes. So I guess if I go back and review the literature more carefully, I can find an explicit example for you don't get a visual frame. Um, yeah, I, I checked this. Uh, I think the paper is is by uh, uh, Balmer, Krause, and Stevenson. I think they they discussed this. Uh, that's the paper I looked at. Um, but then there's also been also an interesting work. I think also same authors, uh, Balmer, Krause, and Stevenson, where they um, they study not the lattice of all localizing tensor ideals, but the, but the lattice of smashing tensor ideals, right? Smashing localizations. And they prove that, mm -hmm. um, not that that's a spatial frame, um, but that it's, uh, what's the word? That's a frame. I think it's, they, they prove that it's a frame. Um, but then I think there's also been recent work by, I forget who, someone has also just done some recent work also on the, on the, the lattice of, of smashing subcategories. So there might be some even more recent progress on that. Um, if someone knows, I forget who it was. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's an example where maybe maybe for the smashing subcategories, there is a, a space you know, that sort of classifies them. That's very plausible. Thanks. Thank you. May I also? Yeah, sorry, please go. Okay, I just maybe just a little bit derailing, but I was just wondering if you know uh, any general theory like this, the useful one, when there's no tensor structure present, especially for right. Okay, yeah, yeah. So okay, well, so the the original approach of Vincent Yingar and Krause does not require a tensor structure. You know, so they they deal with a um, arbitrary, say, compactly generated triangulated category that has an action of a, of a ring on it. Um, so, so that is, um, so their theory is more general in that sense that they, they don't require you to be dealing with a tensor triangulated category. Yeah, I, um, I, I'm, yeah, sorry. I was, I, I mean like when there's like non-commutative ring maybe, so when you cannot really use Benson Yeniger cows. So um, well, you... um, so there, there's been work of, Dan Nakano and some other people that have started to try to develop um, kind of the Balmer spectrum without, you know, for, for not necessarily graded tensor triangulated categories. Um, so I know that there has been some work done on sort of some more purely non commutative examples. Um, but as you may know, I mean, uh, once you get into non truly non-commutative algebra and, um, well, things become more difficult, right? I mean, there, there, there becomes some, some kind of quite deep issues. Um, but, um, there has been some work done by Dan Nakano and his collaborators. And, but I think there's still a lot of unresolved questions, you know, about just some some basic stuff about like Balmer spectrum of a not necessarily braided tensor triangulated category. Um, but maybe, maybe, maybe there's um, some promising stuff in that direction. Thank you. Maybe I can add another sort of class of examples, which are definitely non commutative. If you take quiver representations. Yeah, so finite quiver and finite dimension representations take its bounded derived category. In some cases, one has actually a classification of thick uh, subcategories. There is no reasonable tensor structure. And this uses the theory of non-causing partitions. Uh -huh. So there, there's a 
beautiful paper by Ingels and Thomas. Uh, it goes back to sort of their work and it has been further extended by other people uh, to cover basically all quizzes, even all uh, finite dimensional hereditary algebras. And the crucial condition one has to invoke is that the category is actually generated by exceptional sequences. Yeah. But this is always true if the quiver is of Rinkin type. Mm. Thanks, Helen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henning. Uh, do we have uh, any more questions? Baron, I, I might sorry, as well ask, uh, does this theory, uh, can it shed any light on just the classical telescope conjecture for spectra? Or is this sort of a different question? Um, so, so, I mean, there are related things. I mean, um, this theory, I mean, it doesn't like <laughs> tackle the telescope conjecture, but it, it sort of maybe pins down exactly what the telescope conjecture is equivalent to. So, um, so, I mean, the telescope conjecture is equivalent to, okay, so um, the EN local stable homotopy category is stratified, but the finitely EN localized category, it's not known if it's, okay, so you have like the, the you can localize respect to EN, right? Or you can do the associated sort of finite localization. And, um, all the good stuff you want to prove about the EN local category can be proved. This is what's done by Harvey and Strickland. But all of those questions are unresolved for the finitely localized category. And so, for example, um, the telescope conjecture is equivalent to stratification for those finitely localized categories. Um, so there are some sort of like connections here with sort of um, giving equivalent reformulations of um, the telescope conjecture, but whether or not they're helpful in actually proving telescope conjecture is, is uh, you know, might, might be a stretch. I don't know. I mean, sure. it's plausible. It's plausible, but um, it's, um, it may be more just sort of clarifying equivalent equivalent ways of formulating it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Baron, can you have a look? Uh, sorry, I'm. I find it a little hard to see that um, with my setup. Uh, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, is the notion of universal the, yeah. universal stratification like Balmer spectrum? So I, so so I think that that I think that I think the I think the point is is no, or at least no one no one has been able to. Um, no one has been able to find such a universal approach to stratification um, that works sort of in general. Um, I think that's, that's the issue. Um, and people have been able to gain success in some kind of no theory in situations, but in general, there's no such clear cut story as we have with the, the bomber spectrum when dealing with the compact stuff. Um, yes, my computer is named Moongate. <laughs> it's from okay. an old computer game called Ultima Online. I don't know if anyone in the audience uh, has heard of this computer game, but uh, when I was a kid in the 90s, it was uh, the best thing since sliced bread. Well, Moongates okay. were a thing in the computer game. Okay. Do we do we have any more questions for Baron? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, and uh, Nicola, you were, were were you asking something in the chat? Uh, I think I think no, I think well, sorry, let's pronounce it. Yeah, if you want to ask something still, please go ahead. Uh, no, it's more jokes. That's that's what's that's what's happening in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bern, again for waking up so early for this talk. Yeah, no worries. Um, um, I'm glad that everyone came. It's like quite a pretty good yeah. turnout. Um, okay, let's um, let's give the speaker another round of applause. Toby and Drew and Natalia. Yeah, all of them were here. Yeah. Can yeah. You, they're, they're still um, here.
Are you guys free for like five minutes? Yep, sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you you want to? Bye. Sorry, sorry, everyone else. Says <laughs> like Jerome. Hey, right? Thanks for the great talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it won't be recorded. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, so, and Richard Hip. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks yes. a lot for organizing all of this. Um, yeah. yeah. No problem. Yeah, we have. We are scheduled to have a talk by Fernando Muro of the University of Sevilla. Mm -hmm. next week although i don't yet have the abstract so i'll update the website as soon as i have it mm -hmm. unless there's a situation where that talk can't happen in which case i also inform everyone okay i'll stop recording now thank you everyone okay. for coming um <laughs> you guys um okay, okay. <laughs> do you want to